Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about STEM, S-T-E-M acronym versus STEAM. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because there's a lot of people who don't like STEAM. Now, I'm going to give you my personal opinion on this and my thoughts on this, okay, about STEM versus STEAM. Now, you guys have to understand my background if you don't already. I'm a professional geologist, so I'm a scientist. That's what I am. Uh, yes, geology is an actual science, people. Those of you who have watched me enough know that because it can make predictions and testable models. Hence, it's a science. At least, it's a hard science. And it's usually people like me that don't like the A in STEAM. But first, let's start with STEM, STEM, and STEAM. Most of you are probably familiar with STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. That's what the acronym stands for. The A has recently been added, and that stands for Art. Before I tell you which side of the fence I'm on about this, I'm going to talk about the thought processes behind this and how are these all related? Are they all related. I mean, based in something. And the answer to that question is, it depends on how you look at it. All of these things have one thing in common that this does not usually have. I'm not saying it doesn't have it. I'm saying it usually doesn't. And that is this. I have seen art produced from equations before. And yes, nature, the beautiful way the Fibonacci sequence and all that can be based off math and that can be included in art. I get that. But most of the time, when people think of art, they don't think of this. Okay? Even though if you really think about it, and you really go to the core of it, it kind of is based on this. Even if it's just me looking back and forth and drawing somebody and looking back and forth. It has to do with proportions, shadows, all that stuff is based ultimately on this, just as this is. All right? And when I'm talking science, I'm talking hard science here. I'm not talking the fluffy flu for sciences, okay? Uh, so geology, biology, physics, and uh, chemistry. But, since most people don't think of it that way, and I get why they don't, and, and this is a significant separation. You go to college, and you go to get a bachelor's degree. You're going to either walk out with a bachelor's of science or a bachelor's of art. Arts. Okay? If you get this... You are not a scientist by education. You may do science, and that'll make you a scientist. But by education, you are not a scientist. All right? And there are some professions that can be both science and non-science, like archaeology is one of those. Okay? Uh, psychology is another one. Then you get ones that almost never are. You know, like econom economics isn't a science. I don't care what economists say, what they try to tell you. It is not a science. Uh, sociology, I go back and forth on. But anyway, that, and people do think of that. And we think of that. People like me think of this. But just because you don't have a bachelor's in science and you have a bachelor's in art doesn't mean art doesn't go with this. Because that just has to do with science. I know a lot of people in tech and engineering who can walk out with BAs. And until God, Elon Musk, I didn't know you could get a BA in physics. Michigan Tech offers that. I mean, how bad at math do you have to be to walk out with it? Anyway, usually anything based heavily in math 
you're going to walk out with a BSc in or Bachelor of Science or BS, whatever you want to call it. I just don't say BS because everybody goes, <laughs> um, so, you know, you're going to walk out with that. Like my ex-wife has a psychology degree, a bachelor's. And most people with that walk out with BAs, but she walked out with a BSc because she was leaning towards math. And then switch because she wanted to graduate in four years instead of five. So she has a bachelor's of science in psychology. Um, so, but we can't let that stand in our way, that distinction. And that's how a lot of us think. And it was how I thought when I first saw this. I was like, man, keep that art out of there. Even though the art I generate as a geologist, I have to have some sort of spatial recognition because I although my cross sections in a professional standpoint from a professional view are math based I can make them look as pretty as I want or as bland as I want and that is falls under this and if I'm teaching you like the basic concept of a syncline or an anticline which I've done for you before it's more this I'm just drawing textbook conceptual models or regional you know models so it's more based on this than it is on this, okay? So does it belong in there with these and this? Depends on how you look at it, okay? It really does because I could argue that other than this, this doesn't belong with these other ones or this doesn't belong with these other ones or this doesn't belong with these other ones. If I really wanted to be that guy, I could do it. But there's no point. But you got to think too. Can I? Is there some sort of rationality I can use? Math is used in all of these. Okay, our math is used in science, technology, in engineering. Not so much this directly. Okay, but it is still used directly. It's these things. But also the thing is. Uh, where did my train of thought just go? Engineering, science, technology. If we use this as our base, science, instead of math, like I explained with the uh, with the BSc versus the BA thing, then in that case, these don't belong either, and it would just be S and M. Yeah, go ahead, laugh. I did. <laughs> Why? Because technology and engineering are practical applications of this. Most engineers and people involved in technology, these kind of always go together. So you can't have one without the other, really, at least in my opinion. So if you're going to include technology in, in with STEM or SM, you have to include engineering. And then you just get stick, okay? And we all know that these are all math-based. That gives us our STEM. Because in, when you're applying scientific techniques, you're not doing science. Science involves the scientific method. You don't need the scientific method to, to utilize and put into practice well-established scientific principles. Like, I don't need to be a scientist to plug and chug of a vector equation, okay? I don't need to do that. I don't need to be a scientist to do that. I don't need to know how Newton came up with his, you know, his theory of gravity and everything else just to solve an equation and then use it practically, okay? And I can tell you from working with these guys... For freaking quarter century, that they do not think like we do. The vast majority of them. I've met exceptions to this. I have. But the vast majority of engineers do not think like scientists. If you don't think like a scientist, you can't do in science. Okay? These guys, a lot of these guys, the vast majority of them, at least in the industries I've been in, environmental, construction, okay, you know, industry. Most of the guys involved in that do not understand margins of error. Well, they do understand it. They don't like to see it. They don't like to see gaps in data, even if they're minor gaps. 
you know, sprinkled throughout. And that, you know, they don't like to see statistic standard deviations. They hate all of that stuff. They're very black and white thinkers. If I come up with a number and just say I have a depth of 10.05 meters, but my equipment has a built-in error of 0 0.10 meters, we'll just say that, they don't want to see this. This doesn't exist to them. They'll take this. And that is not science. Science has a built-in error in measuring. We know this. Our measuring techniques get better and better, and we can reduce this more and more, but we can never, ever get rid of it. Okay? Technology isn't a magic wand. Engineers think it is, but it's not. Okay? And so I am bashing on engineers here, but it's not all of you, but it's most of the ones I've met over the years. Okay, standard deviation they have a problem with. They have a problem with gaps in data for whatever reason. For whatever reason, you may not be able to take a reading. And that is significant because it will mess with the rest of the data when you're plotting it. Can you extrapolate? Yeah, but if you want something based off the true data, you can't just write it off. And extrapolations in science are something you not don't really want to do. Engineers freaking do it all the time. But this, we would acknowledge that there was a gap. And if we did extrapolate, like, you know, like we had a bunch of data on a graph that went like this. And then we had some data that went like this. So we have our, you know, anomalies. We do get rid of those. That makes sense on anyone's. But we would, since this is like this, we would do this, okay? But we would acknowledge that we had our gap here. Engineers, based off their models and practical applications of things, might have something that for whatever reason came out like this. And instead of trying to explain us or rerunning the test, they'll be like, well, my theoretical model says I should have this. So let's just go with that. Yet the method could be fucked up or something like that. And in reality, if you got more points, you'd get something more like this. Okay. That's what I'm talking about there. And that kind of got sidetracked there. But let's get rid of all that. Because we're supposed to be like, does art belong <laughs> in STEM? I don't know. That's my honest answer. Now, we got to be careful when we start doing things like this, though. I will acknowledge that. Because you start doing things like this, and people want to stick other things in there. So I got an ear plug. Like, I could see someone trying to say, instead of steam, let's have steam. And this will be English. Uh, I cannot spell. Or they'll say, let's have, you know, Gleam. And let's add language. You know, something like that. We got it. So we got to be careful. Language does not belong in STEM at all. I can tell you that right now. Language is a form of communication. It's it, and it does not require any of this at all ever. This language doesn't. You know, I don't need any of to know any of this to know a language. Okay, I might have to know some of this to do what I wanted to do. I might have to know some of this for this to do something specific. But technically, I don't need to know this to do this either. It all depends on how we define this. All right. Do I think personally the arts are important? Oh, yeah, I do. I really think they are. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about if it belongs in here. And like I said... My honest answer is I do not know. Most people like me would say no. And when I first saw this, I said, get that out of there. But I started thinking about it and I started thinking more and I, I don't know. And it's been enough time now, I still haven't made up my mind. So I'm probably not going to ever fully accept or reject this. I personally, what could be done is you could break this out 
you, you know, since, since this isn't always math based and these three things are, you could have a different, you could have a STEM and something else that falls under arts. You could have like, you know, psychology, art, sociology, whatever, you know, stuff I call pass. You know, something something like that. That, that, that. that doesn't mean you should do that in that order. I'm just using that because I just pulled that out of my head. But it could be something else related to STEM. Something crucial but different, you know, in the educational process. Because in high school, those of you, oh, I know a lot of you who only have a high school education can run rings around me in certain things. And that's fine. I accept that. That's You're good. It means you seek knowledge and we need more of that. We really do. But a high school education is different than a college one. It's even different than an associate's degree. You don't start really seeing it until you hit the bachelor's level. Um, usually. You might, depending on what you're getting associates in. But high school is meant to prepare you for the workforce. You get in that seat before the bell rings. You take lunch at this time every day, all, all the time, or you're in trouble. You get reprimanded. That's what high school's for. It was set up to teach you, to pump you full of information so you could enter the workforce. It is, it is based off the Industrial Revolution. That's why a lot of people with high school educations hate people who went further. I shouldn't say hate, but they think college is worthless. Okay? But... When it comes to things like this, college is anything but worthless. You hear them sit there and say, oh man, <laughs> who needs basket weaving? I mean, I could learn that on my own. Ah. Let's see you try to learn nuclear physics on your own. Okay. Yeah, you can be taught some of it uh, or read some of it, but there's lots of aspects to those things you're not going to understand without knowing the how. See, the thing with further education, especially in science, in engineering, is you learn those things you were taught in high school or shown in high school, you learn about how we get there, how we got there. See, that's why a lot of people sit there and say education's doctrination, and I have yet to see outside of the political polarization anyone with a bachelor's degree or higher sit there and say, you know, education's indoctrination. Especially scientists, okay? Because it's not. You don't really get the seat because they're like, oh, they just tell you a bunch of stuff and then you have to learn it and it's all wrong and political this, political that, my religion this, my religion that. Nah, fuck all that shit. It's not. That stuff they pump into you, 12th grade and younger, is just to prepare you to kick you out that door and enter the workforce. You learn what we know and now you have to, because our workforce in an industrial setting, you cannot be completely ignorant. You know, there's, you have to know at least how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, okay? But when you go beyond that, when you go further, you realize, well, why do chemical reactions? I was told, a, you know, periodic table in high school, and I was showing some chemical equations, but you're showing how we get those. You're showing how to do a titration. Now, in high school, if you take advanced courses or honors courses, they will show you that. But the vast majority of Americans don't do that. They just want to get the hell out of there in four years. And I understand that. I was one of those. The worst time in somebody's life is when they're an adolescent and you're trying to beat them down with rules. <laughs> that is the worst time in their life to do that. When I graduated high school, I said I was never going to college. Ever. Yeah, that didn't last. <laughs> so, but, um, yeah. So, and I didn't do good in high school. I scraped by. I will admit it. You know, I just wanted to be the fuck out of there. And even though I got a good public education, I look back and I'm like, man, Steve, when you were 14 to 18, you were a fucking idiot. <laughs> and I was. I didn't think that when I was 14 to 18. But now that I'm 48, I do think that or how old, however old I am. <laughs> so anyway, I'm getting sidetracked and stuff. So when you see this, don't just immediately flip out. I would like to know your guys's opinions on does do you think art should be included in stem 
And maybe you guys out there can present me with something that I haven't thought about. But I've thought about a lot of stuff in this. And I just, even though this is 20 minutes long, I haven't even broken the ice with what I've thought about yet. Okay, anyway, before this gets too long, that's it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I hope you learned something.